Good evening, everyone. I'm Kevin Galatz, and I'm a program facilitator working with the Regina District Industry Education Council in SunWest School Division. Today, it's my pleasure to introduce Dawson Painter, who is an environmental field technician. Dawson is a graduate of Nelford Composite High School, and during his presentation, we'll learn what the occupation entails and the interesting training path Dawson took to get to where he is today. Just a reminder before we begin, this session is being recorded and will appear on the RDIEC YouTube channel for you and others to view in the future. Just go to the RDIEC website at www.rdiec.ca to find the YouTube channel. Well, thanks for taking time to do the presentation today, Dawson, and I'll turn it over to you. John, thanks, Kevin, for having me. It's an honor and a privilege. Um, yeah, hopefully we can... Uh, I'll learn something today about uh, myself, I guess, and then uh, how I got here. Um, sorry if I do ramble on, but uh, I'll do my best here. Uh, I'm not the best talking about myself, so, but this is a learning curve for me, and it's uh, it's challenging challenging me to grow even more as well in like presenting about what I do and like this is what I love to do. And uh, I am very, very, very fortunate. We will learn later on in the slides here. I'm very fortunate to have this job. I, I feel like I got lucky. Um, but, you know, there's, you got to be lucky sometimes. And luck plays, plays a role in some things. So I feel I'm very, very fortunate to be here. And uh, let's get rolling. So, yeah, my name is Austin Painter. I uh, work out of Saskatoon, Saskatchewan as a uh, environmental field technician or just a field technician. I'm a, it's a jack of all trades kind of job and I'm currently at uh, Pinter and Associates. And uh, yeah, let's begin here. So kind of the job description, like I said before, jack of all trades. Um, I kind of have the experience and whatnot my main role is to basically assist uh, project managers and engineering staff get by gathering water, soil, soil vapor, hazardous material samples. That could be asbestos, lead, mold, um, you know, concrete samples. What else? Just like air, air quality samples, like you name it, anything like just data collection, bulk sample collection sample collection that's kind of the main gig of it that's my main role um yeah participate in and lead field investigations and inspections so that that could be you know phase ones and phase two environmental site assessments phase three envi environmental site assessments we'll kind of, i kind of will dive deeper into that at a later date but my main role kind of is just that participate and be lead, be involved with these investigations and inspections. Again, there's gonna be like office sides of things and whatnot. So when we're not out in the field collecting samples or leading investigations, we're doing data analysis, we're doing reporting, we're doing, you know, uh, training other staff, uh, helping with safety and all that fun stuff. So. It's kind of like, it's a very like difficult, not difficult, but it's a uh, interesting kind of gig. Uh, another job, part of my job description is, you know, we have a, we run a drill rig. So I offer and assist a drill rig, um, currently being trained on how to drive it. So I'm not the best stick, trip, stick shift driver, but uh, I'm getting there slowly. Yeah, and again, it's just kind of like maintaining equipment. So we use a lot of like uh, soil vapor, like sniffers. It's called the RKI Eagle interface probes, GPS rods, GPS base stations. Just making sure that's all up to snuff for the rest of the field work staff that's kind of involved with field work activities. Yeah. I kind of went over this already. System construction management. That's another just field investigation. Landfill decommissioning. 
GPS surveys, electromagnetic, electromagnetic surveys. Uh, that's kind of like we go out and find gravel for clients. So it's a very fun job, that one. You get to drive around on snowmobiles and quads and pull a little sled behind us, and it shoots shoots kind of a, a radar into the ground, and it tells comes back with conductivity and whatnot. And then we'll, the engineers, I'm not a part of that this, or anything like that, but the engineers are able to tell uh, how much gravel and, or just kind of an estimate of how much gravel and the quality of gravel that's in the ground. Yeah, let's move on here. Uh, I feel like I rambled, but some skills of being a field technician I kind of acquired over the years here. Uh, big one is just field testing, data collection. Like I said, you, you kind of want to like have that experience of you want to be able to collect like surface water, groundwater, like you got to have this kind of want to be like versatile. So there's like different procedures of collecting groundwater compared to surface water, soil, um, sediment, hazardous material samples, all that fun stuff. Data entry, there's a lot of Excel sheets, um, a lot of staring at Excel. So that's always a, a good part. You, you kind of get to know the the shortcuts and the ins and outs of Microsoft Excel. Um, but uh, I, again, yeah, I learn every day something new and I'm very fortunate enough to work with some computer wizzes at Pinter that uh, are very, very helpful in that sense. Some machinery op operations, so there could be ATVs, snowmobiles, uh, geez, what else, like, uh, those UTVs, I, I'm learning how to drive a direct push rig. So it's just, just kind of like being able to understand that, you know, there's more, more to like driving and like operating things like other than like a truck or a car. So just being comfortable in the sense that you're going to be in some kind of out of like the normal places you're going to be up north in the bush, lots of snow. You got to be confident on a snowmobile, or you're going to be like in the middle of a bog somewhere or out down south and ripping around the, the range on an ATV sort of thing. So being confident in that and just gaining those hours and getting as much hours as you can and your certifications for those types of machinery is, is essential. And, Employers and com companies, and they they look after that like very well here. I'm just going to refer to my notes here, so I don't want to miss anything. Yeah, so yeah, boating licenses, whatnot. So field instrument operations. That's kind of like I mentioned earlier: RKI Eagles, interface probes, and whatnot. GPS A stations. Client communication is very, very important. Again, Pinter and Associates is kind of a, it's like a general engineering firm. We, we cover like a broad range between municipal work, that's all environmental work and like geotechnical work. I'm more or less on the environmental side, but I do dabble in the municipal and the geotechnical activities. And the municipal could be like lagoon, building like a lagoon or, a lagoon assessment, wastewater assessment, uh, building a landfill sort of thing. Um, and geotechnical is like, it's very like soil orientated and they're more or less worried about like the compaction and like, is it safe to like build a building here? Like what's the proctor like? And like, what's the best like condition of the soil? whatnot so yeah no sorry here but we'll, we'll keep on going here i'll go through the list no taking be very di diligent diligent in the notes so if something goes bad you have your little book you want to be like very detailed you want to document everything you do so like if anyone wants to look at anything or whatnot they know exactly except i said like what you did 
and uh, the client sometimes asks, what did you guys do that day? Then so you have like a very like step by step note taking kind of day explaining exactly what you did. So you don't want to like stray too far. You don't want to do something that the one else like approved of or anything like that. And last reporting, that's kind of like the office side of things. And that kind of ties back into data entry. So traits, I would say for myself and traits for everybody else I kind of work with, you got to be team oriented. Like you want to be, want to be able to able to work in a team because you can't do everything by yourself. You got to, you just got to be able to understand that sometimes you got to just take orders and do it. And then like you come back, you can redabble, express your, express ways how we can do something else like differently. And uh, like, and just kind of being like a cohesive unit and not like being a lone wolf. Like that's, like my next thing is ability to work alone as part of a team. So I kind of like contradict myself there, but there's going to be some days where you're going to be away from your team because they're, they're going to they're trusting you enough as a technician, a field technician to go do that work and bring back complete your scope of work. You complete it like to the best of your abilities. But you're all you're bringing it back to your team, and then you're all going to kind of report on it together. So that's kind of like how my little crew works. Um, another trait is physically fit, like physically able to like handle long days. There's going to be like big, big days out in the field, especially in the summer. We'll get more along that later on in the presentation here, but uh, the summer is very very busy and it's going to be long days. So just physically being able to handle those long days, rain or shine, like cold or hot, it's going to be crazy. And more or less, like it is sometimes like very physically demanding, especially when you're on the rig, slinging pipe and lifting up core tubes and whatnot. It's, it's going to be a lot. And uh, just being able to like maintain that, stamina some traits again being organized there's lots on the go lots on the go lots of different projects lots of different clients lots of different type of work could be groundwater monitoring one day the next day you're doing a hazmat assessment on a building so just being able to coordinate days where you're not stacking up on different clients or you're not overworking yourself to like the point where you just can't do it anymore like you got to stay organized and then just naturally being able to lead and understand the scope of work so this is a kind of a a big one for me as well just being like having that confidence and like understanding like what you're doing taking that time to fully understand it before you go out and if you got a team under you like try to be a leader. Like everyone in your team should try to be a leader. You're not like trying to out, outdo each other, but you want to be confident in yourself or you are kind of like, you know, directing how things go throughout the day. Personality best suited, I'd say it, you just got to kind of be determined. I do look forward to the winter months, the, the, the summer months are very fun. Like they're long work days. Like you're going to get through it. The winter, it kind of slows down because not a lot of people want to work out in the winter. Not a lot of projects are going on around the province during the winter. So it's just kind of being determined to get through those long days and just get through the nights where you're away from home. You know, it is a lot, but at the end it's, it's all worth it. And, when you see projects come to an end, it's, it's, it's an amazing feeling. And you do feel like it's, uh, you do feel like very accomplished. Like, that's why I, I love my job. Like it, the way it makes me feel like at the end and what we're doing. So it's just being determined, calm and relaxed. 
it's not always going to be like roses and sunshine. Stuff may go sideways. There's going to be lots of lots of things to resolve. Equipment malfunctions, uh, you know, sickness, you know, like people might call in sick or clients might switch days that we agreed on months ago to come work. Well, it might not work for them now. So just kind of being patient, you know, not everything's going to be perfect. Then just another big one for me is just being efficient and punctual. Um, it's very important to like understand that you for like it's everything's for money. Like things cost a lot, and this kind of work costs clients some money. So we want to complete work in a timely manner. We want to before we even go out understand what we're doing, making sure everything is met, clients happy. We're happy. We're not mad at ourselves because we didn't do something or we're not like rushing and missing stuff or just being confident or being efficient or in and out. That's kind of the best, best way to put it here. We'll go on to the next slide here. Yeah, so this is kind of a, just, I just threw again together a slide like, there's the office at the top part of the screen here in Saskatoon. So yeah, that's where I go every day, do some reporting and whatnot when I'm not out in the field. Um, yeah, I get to see a lot, a lot of Alberta, Saskatchewan. I've been to Manitoba a few times, but north, south, east, west, rain or shine, snow or winter. Uh, it's That's my office. 100% like yeah I got my physical office here in the city but no like the just being out and about like that's kind of like my everyday like it's it's uh I'm very very fortunate um yeah we got uh I guess I can kind of go through it here the uh kind of the top left below the uh the purple car there that's up at Fond du Lac so that's north of Lake Ath Athabasca on the northern shore of Lake Athabasca. So we uh, we got some work up there in that community. Just in the next photo there, just an amazing picture of the fall up, up in northern Saskatchewan. That kind of a GPS survey in the snow. The bottom left, just a quick electromagnetic survey in uh, Alberta there in the snow up in the bush. So. That was a that was a fun job that one. It was a uh, was breathtaking. And then yeah, just kind of the classic green elevators and in, in southern Saskatchewan and in the city. We do lots of jobs in cities, both Regina, Prince Albert, wherever, you know. So it's not just all about being out in the great outdoors. You're you're gonna have a mixture of like urban and urban environments and, you know, far north environments or far south environments. It's, uh, you never know what you're gonna get. It's kind of like the old saying there. So yeah, some rewards of the occupation. So it's kind of just being able to work closely with First Nation communities. communities. Um, especially my team, I, we kind of have a, a little, uh, little group of four. Um, we, uh, I work under the, uh, the, uh, site reclamation and remediation kind of team. So we do a lot of like remediation work where it's just kind of like cleaning up, you know what I mean? It's, uh, we're, we're cleaning up groundwater, we're cleaning up soil, you know, contaminated sites and whatnot. So yeah, it's kind of, a we get to see a lot. So remediating, closing contaminated, site, contaminated sites. Like I said before, seeing the end of a project and closing a site, it is a feeling like no other. It's it's such a good feeling. Uh, you get to travel and see some remote places that not many people get a chance to witness and or be a part of. 
So we're very lucky and fortunate in that sense. Um, I never thought I'd eat caribou, but working up north, like with with Fond du Lac and other communities up there, we've had the chance to stay with community members and whatnot, and it's it is breathtaking and it is very rewarding. It's a uh, it's a very different lifestyle, and like caribou is hands down probably like one of my favorite meats right now. So it's a uh, it is definitely, definitely awesome. Yeah, and again, like, not even like northern communities and whatnot, it's just kind of closely working with local contractors and just uh, town members, community members. Um, with Painter, we're very, like, fortunate enough, we're able to, like, hire on, like, people from towns, people from communities to work alongside us. So it's kind of like, you know, we get to go and, uh, okay, we got a new, new, new crew member sort of thing. So, and, or it's like, okay, here we go. We're going to go work with, uh, you know, some guy, some person has a, a loader or something and hire him on, you know, and it's, it's, it's kind of like, uh, I like that part of it. Just kind of meet, meet new, new people, new new personalities different personalities kind of every job so it's uh it's awesome yeah and it, we are making a difference it feels like it, uh, it takes a lot of time and energy and kind of long days to remediate and close sites so it's uh you get to know know people really fast and you get to uh, see like things progress really fast and uh you're sometimes you're working along alongside like the people like a a year later like and they they know like what's going on so it's it's nice in that sense where it's it's very like kind of close-knit and uh yeah so again i'm very fortunate and lucky enough to work with some very talented knowledgeable patient and positive individuals I work under a lead um, professional engineer, uh, Ty Van Camp, and uh, fortunate enough to. This is a very funny kind of funny kind of beginning to my my painter story. Um, I knew Ty from Melfort. He's uh, originally from Melfort, and uh, he uh, went to school with my uh, my older sibling so it's kind of funny in that sense the way the world works i do remember you know when i was applying at pinter we were both looking at each other like geez, i've seen you somewhere like i know that face sort of thing so it's just funny how the world works in that sense and uh kind of up in the top right corner here oh sorry i should mention too I don't want to forget about Jessica Cutter. She's the manager of the environmental services team at Pinter. And uh, I'm very, very, very lucky to work under her as well. So it is a fantastic job. I love my job. And uh, we get to see like up in the top right corner there, the community, community member from Fond du Lac that worked closely alongside us for a couple summers so he he helped us out a lot so it was very nice of him to join us along and then yeah bottom left there of course I'm the fisherman and I like to fish but I didn't catch a fish that day so I don't have a photo of myself holding the fish but that's on Lake Athabasca we had some downtime and uh a uh, local contractor from Fond du Lac offered to take us fishing for the afternoon. So, yeah, never thought I'd be out in Lake Athabasca, but there we were. Okay, not not so fun stuff for the kind of the challenges here. You're going to work in conditions where it's going to be rough. It's... Uh, as you can see in the photos there, it's going to be like minus 40, minus 50. 
there's going to be issues with machines. There's going to be access problems. You're not going to be able to drive to the spots where you got to go. Sometimes you got to walk it. That bottom left corner that was in the community had to walk. Walk a very, very long ways just to stop at four monitoring wells. So it's kind of a, it's a pain, but you, you look back and you kind of, you're like, yeah, I did that sort of thing. Like, that's all me. So it's, it's a challenge, but then it's reward at the end. It's kind of the way I look at it. You know, the top right corner, you're, you're sometimes you're in a super store parking lot. And there's people everywhere. They're asking what you're doing, and it, it's it's not good because then it's well, it's it's all right if you, general public sometimes are confused and and or upset at projects, but sometimes they just they just don't know, and you know some people are more concerned than others. So it's kind of just the balance of what do you say to people. Usually, you just help people just environmental stuff sort of thing. So yeah, uh, the bottom right corner, um, that photo was the contractor was not very happy with me at the time. They couldn't believe I was making them drive around in the, in the snow like that. So I wasn't on that drill rig that day. I was more or less just doing the sampling portion. And it was about minus 40 for the three days we were out there. And the rig got stuck, I, I would probably say about 15 times. Those were some long days, and those guys were not happy with me. So more or less, you just got to take, take your battles and whatnot. Um, they're going to be long days and cold days, very hot days, cranky people, cranky contractors. You just kind of got to... your poison you know sort of thing so i kind of got a story where unfortunate fortunate stuff like it's kind of like iffy or whatnot but it's just kind of uh you just gotta do your thing sort of thing so sorry if i rambled on there <laughs> so salary and benefits you're going to, when you first start, it's like, I just kind of first started here at Painter. So I'm, I'm kind of making just like a, whatever, I'm not going to say it or anything like that, but, uh, <laughs> um, anyways, I get paid in salary or whatever. So my health and dental, everything's usually covered. Right. So there's going to be, we get some unique ones here at Pantera, like we can go order up a chiropractor, go get some massages done, which is very, very awesome. I got to start utilizing that. Um, yeah, we get RRSPs, deferred profit sharing programs. Um, at Pinter here, it, it's kind of, you got to work a full, one full year, then you start these RRSPs and deferred profit train programs. So I just kind of started that about a couple months ago with Pinter. So it's it's kind of new to me right now as well, but more or less, of course, you're gonna contribute to a Canada pension plan and whatnot. And um, all a deferred profit train program is, it's just Pinter will eventually match like what, you're investing into your accounts or whatever they set up. I think I'm explaining that right. I'm not the best at, I'm learning this stuff still. So yeah, they more or less that they, they just match what you, what you invest over time. It just gets more and more. Um, very, very fortunate. Pinter is very, very kind of not lenient, but like they're going to get your stats off. You're going to get your paid vacation time. You're going to bank a lot of bank time. Um, I use my bank time. I'm not afraid to say this or anything, but I use my bank time to, you know, take days off. Um, 
want a little bit more money on my on my check or something, just take some bank time out, add it on, sort of thing. So that's very nice to have. Um, and it comes in handy. Some days in the in winter where there's not lots of going on for myself, you know, um, take a Friday off or or I was very had so much bank time uh, last winter that I took a, a week vacation to Mexico on my bank time. So it was it was great. So there's very those opportunities to bank your time and just having those extra hours to kind of play with is it's a uh, it's very like fortunate and uh, yeah like uh, like I was going to get on with here um pinter every company or you know organization they might have their own uh policies or whatever um but we can only work up to 14 hours a day so you know after 14 hours is up like we gotta like stop like that's good that's our day so but some companies they might be different like it might be only 12 hour days or anything like that um so it's tough in that sense because something goes wrong out in the field or anything like that, and you're 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 away. Like there might be days where you're going to be out there for fourteen hours, sort of thing. So more or less, it's a uh, seven and a half work hour days here at Pinter. I start at eight o'clock, end at four thirty, and uh, that's usually my office time. But field days, who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Yeah, here's some educational requirements. Um, these are just what I have, um, but to be to get in kind of the field technician and the environmental technician role, you don't necessarily need all this. Um, I got a high school diploma, um, a bachelor's degree and a techn technical diploma from the Saskatchewan Polytechnic. Um, you can, there are many, many roles where that technical diploma that I got is very suffice. That's exactly what companies are looking for. So more or less, like the way I looked at it, like the more you have, like the better, but it's, it's totally up to you do not need like a bachelor's degree or anything like that. I'm not discouraging bachelor degrees, but it's uh this technical diploma, like the program I went through is was so sufficient for so many companies. Um, driver's license, like here's just some other like certificates and whatnot, first aid, CPR, um, defensive driving, your boat license. ATV snowmobile certificates. I kind of got these certificates already through the Saskatchewan Polytechnic. We'll we'll get on about the whole uh, journey here. Um, I think it's on the next slide here. Um, but uh, I got these certificates through Polytechnic, and then even just kind of the more certificates, the better. Like I was saying before. I don't know, just hunt for safety, uh, trapping certificates, ice rescue. Just those are some like extra courses that a person can do. You slap it on your resume and it's it makes you like, okay, like this guy, he can do stuff on his own. Like he, they're like motivated enough to go out and do this. So it's uh, kind of the more the merrier. It's the way I look at everything. So, yeah. So all those kind of, they came from, they came from Polytechnic and whatnot. So, but if, if you have certificates that you took on your own time, it just makes everything like look way better. Perfect. All right, ready. Okay. I might ramble on and the story kind of gets crazy from here. I've been rambling, but it's all right. So like Kevin mentioned earlier, 
I graduated from the Melfort Unit Comprehensive Collegiate in Melfort, Saskatchewan. I kind of always wanted to do something related to the land and the environment. I looked at many, many, many programs through Lakeland, U of S, U of L. Nothing really kind of got me excited. It was uh, it's kind of a bummer. All my friends knew like or were getting accepted and whatnot, and uh, I was kind of kind of stuck. I I was a little bit of a homebody. I didn't want to go too far from home, so that was kind of the big challenge for me was just being close enough so I could go back home and basically see my parents. So it was, uh, it was tough. So then I eventually, I stumbled across the Saskatchewan Polytechnic in Prince Albert and they offered a integrated resource management program at the Woodland campus, I think it's called. Um, but anyway, it's just a SAS Polytech in Prince Albert. So I applied, I got my seat the fall of 2016. I was very fortunate because I was very late on it. I don't know how I got the seat, but I did. Anyways, moving on. So I go through my first year at Polytechnic and the Polytechnic is very, very helpful in the sense that they look out for you with summer jobs and post kind of convocation of acquiring and like getting like job offers to you so you can have that experience for like future employers. So this 20 years, summer of 2017, I, uh, I didn't apply for anything. I know, I know it was bad. It was bad, but I just kind of, I wanted to go back home and just, Focus. Okay, I did my first year, but uh, I'm all right. Like, I got to drop the city of Alfred, and it was okay. I was just mowed lawns and whatnot. So, okay. And then eventually, okay, did my first year at Polytech. 2018 rolls around. I convocate from Polytechnic, I get my diploma in integrated resource management. And then I get a summer position with the Water Security Agency in Saskatoon as a technical assistant. So all that role was, how I got that role was basically I had a boating license and none of the other like 20 students in the province had a boating license. So with that boating license, I I'm kind of I'm gonna boost myself up here, but I was a man. I I was hauling around that boat all over the province, collecting water samples at these tiny little lakes, little streams, little rivers in the province. And I was being asked to help the other students learn how to drive the boat, how to back in the boat, how to load the boat. So I was very trusted in that role, which made me feel amazing because I was very excited to acquire that role just solely on because, hey, I got my diploma, was feeling on top of the world, and Polytechnic. I was the only one on my class to apply for this job and Polytechnic got me that boating license. So that was great. So what was I gonna do after that summer roll? Well, I had a plan. That plan when I acquired the technical assistant role at the WSA, I applied through the transfer program from the Polytechnic to the U of S. I got my seat in the U of S the fall of 2018 at the Renewable Resource Management Program. And I just had to do two more years to get my degree in Renewable Resource Management. So, boom, I, I got that, I was in. Did my first year and 
it was it was difficult for me. It was uh, I I wasn't the best. I'm not the best at math. I'm straight up with you. Um, a self deprecating humor here, but no, I I struggled. Like I'll I'll be completely honest. It was a totally different world. What did I get myself into? Like this is like tough. Um, anyways, I, I powered through it. Fortunately, I didn't get my summer job back at the water security. So I would just work. I just applied for the summer. I've lived in Saskatoon for the summer and I just applied at uh, Crossmount retirement area, being a landscaper. So that was great. But I'll never ever take away experience from that. So I got to drive equipment. I got to drive my, you know, the one tons. I'm hauling soil. I'm driving around Kubota's UTVs. Like I got to operate a skid steer just for like a small amount of time. Like I got to get those hours on the equipment, you know, the tamper jacks, the packers, the rollers. I I'll never take that for granted. I planted grass seed across like the acres and acres and built up lawns and brick legs, like all those skills and assets and just like learn the value of like you know just put your head down and work and you know you get to see projects come to an end in a timely sufficient matter and you get to hang out with cool people and you know some old rich people too so you get to hear some pretty awesome stories and see some cool cars and yeah it was it was awesome um, I'll never never ever like take my experience out at Crossmount for granted. So, so, so then, yeah, it gets a little crazy here. Okay. So then COVID hit and I had no job prospects on the horizon because of the pandemic. So I got my, I eventually congregated from the U of S. So I got my, you know, I majored in resource science. So I got my degree. Okay, what do I do now? Well, no one was really hiring right when COVID hit in like March 2020. So I was just kind of hanging out. Uh, I was applying for jobs and I was being very, very picky. I was, I am, I'm, I'm more or less, I want to stay in Saskatoon. I'm close with everybody. My friends are here. My partner's here, like, for, for staying. Like, I'm staying here sort of thing. So that year, I joined a ball team, a men's baseball team. I'm very, I'm very fond of baseball. So we're playing, we're playing. And, yeah, I hear, uh, hear one of my teammates, his partner is leaving a uh, – environmental consulting company and uh his partner asked me if like i wanted to more or less like interview for the position well of course i will that it just fell in the seat of my lap like i'm there comes luck into play playing ball no like job prospects on the horizon then out of nowhere boom Birch consulting calls. So I get on to get on with Birch starting August 2020. And that is where all my hazardous material assessment and sampling comes into play. I sampled asbestos, lead, mold, you name it all that nasty, gross stuff that no one wants to breathe in or no one wants to touch. I sampled it for two years. I was, I was doing phase one ESAs. I was doing phase two ESAs and I was doing phase three ESAs. Phase one, you go and look at it, check it out. Kind of, okay, we can take samples. Let's confirm that it's here. So that'd be the phase two after we collect samples and whatnot, well, how do we get rid of it in a safe matter where it's all gone? 
it's remediated and we don't have to worry about this anymore. Well, that's where the phase three came into play. I gained so much experience, contractors, client communication, communicating with contractors, setting time, scheduling. It was a four person company, Birch, and I'm pretty sure it is still a very small company today, but they are by far like it's a, uh, they're asbestos and like hazardous material, like, hundred percent that that's exactly what they do and they're very specialized in it so i gained all my experience through them in that world for two years i did that and i was trusted enough to project management project manage jobs on my own i was trusted enough to go out and you know go on these quotes or these contractor bids and walk around facilities and come up with a quote and then come back, put in our bid and we get jobs. Like it, it was amazing. So I'm very fortunate enough for them and I'm fortunate enough for my ball team. I'm fortunate enough for Birch for giving me those two years and kind of taking a flyer on me, to be honest. It was kind of, uh, I had my, my everything. COVID came around, kind of screwed everything up. And they just took a flyer on me. So it was awesome. Fortunately, my time at Birch had to come to an end. I I more or less had to follow my heart. I wanted to get into like the land and the, the environment more. Yeah, the hazmat is environment related, um, but it's uh I more or less wanted to work with water and soil. And uh Painter and Associates came around. So that's where I'm at now. And I no, do not plan on leaving anytime soon here with Pinter. Sorry, that was a long, long slide here. We'll get going here. So yeah, some uh, opportunities. Like I, I might've already mentioned this or not um, in the previous slide. When I was first applying, there's quite a bit Lots of positions around Western Canada, especially. There's lots of private consulting companies in, in Saskatchewan, Alberta, BC, and Manitoba, you know, Southeast SAS, Southwest SAS. There's a lot of like private little, not little, uh, private co consulting companies. Um, and they are very active on recruiting junior positions. Um, like I said before, I was picky. I wanted to be as close to home, close to Melford. And preferably I wanted to stay in Sas Saskatchewan because of the graduate retention program. And Saskatchewan's home to me. Um, I'm very, very happy where I'm at and uh, I don't plan on leaving Saskatchewan. So yeah, uh, some opportunities here um, at Pinter. I have the opportunity of being a lead for hazardous material projects. Dating back to my Birch days, I got the most experience in Pinter right now with asbestos abatement projects, lead abatement projects, asbestos sampling, lead sampling. So I have a opportunity to be a lead in the company in that sense. So that is very awesome. I enjoy the hazmat jobs because a they make me feel good because I know what I'm doing, and also I I, I don't mind it. It's uh it's kind of just me doing it right now, so it's it's more or less like I get to go and hang out in some spooky old buildings and whatnot by myself and uh, get to see some pretty cool stuff too. Um. Also, yeah, um, yeah. Recently, I had the opp opportunity to learn and drive uh, the direct push geoprobe truck mounted drill rig that Pinter has, and we use those for our Phase Two ESAs and Phase Three environmental site assessments. So I'm kind of the assistant uh, operator on the rig. It's uh, myself and another operator 
So again, there, there we go. It's kind of, you find your niche. I found my niche here. I got my niche with the hazmat. I'm being trusted enough to run the rig. It's So it's kind of just kind of establishing yourself, taking every opportunity that is being thrown at you and just kind of being confident with it. Um, I'm getting the opp opportunity. I can I can share this or not. I'm getting the opportunity to be on the OHS committee at Pinter. Um, I'm doing. They are providing me with all sorts of training programs, safety programs, uh, supervisor safety programs, um, and whatnot. So, just kind of conforming to government standards, construction safety standards. And just and getting that opportunity to be on the OHS committee is very, very wonderful. As I have a niche like safety with like hazmat and whatnot. So just more or less, just opportunities like that are coming around for myself right now and hopefully kind of continues in the future. But when you're first starting out, um, there's training opportunities that are offered for everybody. If you want to specialize in in like a certain like technique or you want to take on like OHS, all you got to do is ask and more or less like companies, Pinter, Hirsch, anybody, they'll like offer to pay for it and you take it and you get your certificate. So it's it's amazing in that sense. Um, some related occupations that I was applying for at the time and, or it's very, yeah, it's related to kind of a field technician. So field technician, remember it's a, it's more or less a, it's a broader range of, of uh, kind of areas. So a lot of my work, like I said, is in the environmental field groundwater, soil sampling, that's the majority of it, waste consolidation. But there's also like forestry technicians, there's resource technicians, there's fisheries technicians, horticulture technicians, wildlife technicians. And those are like niche roles, right? So there's definitely roles like that with, through the integrated resource management program at the PA campus I took thought that like diploma is it's uh that covers all those kind of specialized areas so you take fishery courses you take horticulture courses you take forestry courses wildlife courses you know national parks like you can be like a parks technician where you you just work in like a national park and manage their environmental like programs and you do all the sampling and whatnot so you you can like, get on with that like uh the related occupations that are kind of i wouldn't say like more relevant or whatnot but there's quite a bit of opportunity out there especially in like alberta and saskatchewan or like environmental technicians and so, yeah, technically an environmental field technician, but then there's an environmental technician where you might be uh, measuring like air quality. Uh, at, uh, for like a private like oil and gas consulting company, you know what I mean? It's air quality technicians, you know, air environmental scientists, junior scientists. It's more or less it's your right now it's kind of you're doing the same roles as a, an environmental field technician but you can you can specialize you can get more niche get more like advanced you can focus more or less on one but right now my role is it's just jack of all trades that's the, that's the way i like to how i like to kind of describe it like work balance, yeah. 
So again, I think we're repeating here again, but uh, summer months are always going to be the busy season, especially in my role. Try not to, usually there's no weekend work, but if you're in like a flying community and you're on a tight schedule, you there will be opportunities to work through the weekends and you know bank your time. So I pinker, you work on the weekend, that's just like straight bank time. So I, that's awesome, like more or less, like you're just straight up making extra money at that point or whatever. So that's a horrible way to look at it. But no, you don't usually work on the weekends and no Monday to Friday. But if you're somewhere where you can't come back home or you got to wait for a flight or you know, wait for your barge or something like you gotta, gotta just kind of push through it. And yes, again, um, at Pinter, more or less, it could be different at other co companies and whatnot. Um, but usually, I encourage you to take time off. Again, use that bank time, take some extra days off, and just kind of don't burn yourself out. Go and enjoy your family. Go enjoy the dog. I just got a new dog, new puppy. So I try to spend as much time with her, try to spend as much time with my partner. It's a very, very rewarding when you get to come home. There's going to be some days where you got to stay overnight, especially in the summer. Summers are the busy season. <laughs> so... Yeah, but the winter winter months, I'm usually home every night, except if, you know, there might be phase two environmental site assessments at, you know, some gas station somewhere that just comes out of nowhere and we're going, we're driving, driving to wherever, then you got to find, figure out hotel rooms and whatnot. So it can, it can be kind of sporadic, but usually you can forecast what your life work balance is going to look like months ahead at a time. I think that's all I got. I'm sorry if I rambled. I think I covered everything. Um, but yeah, questions and answers, I guess. Well, awesome. Awesome. Uh, I'm going to be honest with you. I had no idea what an environmental field technician did. I, I have a lot more insight into it now. So that's yeah. Good. Yeah. I have a couple of questions and a couple of observations. First of all, I, I think it's amazing and wonderful that you've got your training in the way you did, in the sense that you've got uh, kind of the best of both worlds. You've got the the hands-on kind of training at the uh, SAS Polytech at Woodlands campus with the integrated resource management program. And then you kind of were able to bridge that in just two more years and get a degree. So I, I and I think just for students to know that. You know those kinds of programs do exist out there that in you know in a span of four years right is that is that about four schools yeah. you got a four, four years <laughs> yeah yeah and a degree and that's you know most people just can get a degree in that period of time but but you got both and i think that's that's uh probably is going to serve you well and it sounds like it already has um a couple of things. So you, you answered a couple of questions there about the extra hours. Like extra hours, like when you're working in a isolated, you know, remote location in the summertime. That is that basically just to hammer through the job and get it done while you got good daylight and good weather? Is that part of it? Or you're there anyways because you can't fly home? Yeah, that's that's kind of the gist. It's uh you we kind of have a plan of work, scope of work beforehand. So just kind of hammer that out basically try to do it in five days or you know 11 days so it's kind of more or less hammer that out don't overwork yourself sort of thing if that makes sense don't want to like work too long a days but Ooh, if but something has to get done you got to get it done get you home one day sooner than just try to yeah try to complete the scope of work in in a timely fashion so you there's no like extra special trips or anything that have to be made. It just costs everyone more money to sort of thing go. So, so this is maybe a hard question because I think a lot of us go back to some of our decision making process for career decision making. You said you always wanted to be in working with a land or environment or something like that. Can you can you pinpoint what that 
because I think that's always the tough point for kids you know, coming out of high school. What is it that I want to do? What is my passion? How did you, do you know how that evolved or can you recall? Yeah, I, from, I guess, yeah, like an early age, I kind of always thought I'm going to be a conservation officer. Like right. That was kind of like what my thought was. And more or less just like, yeah, that's a tough question. Well, I mean, and this is related. Obviously, your yeah. conservation officer works with the environment in, in some aspect anyways. But it's, you know, and that thing sometimes is the thing too. Students don't know that, you know, you get focused on just one job in particular and find out there's a whole realm of work in that field that's that's related yeah like uh i think more or less i i can answer here i've always wanted to be a, a conservation officer but then it, it was always like well i'd be like cool to like work work with birds or like work with you know work around trees like or something you know like being like the, being that person to be able to like name trees and stuff and know the Latin names. Like that was kind of my, my gig, like I wanted to be, but then, you know, I guess like life happens and just kind of just fell in like, okay, like groundwater and like soil is kind of my jam right now. So. This wasn't on the, maybe some things you hadn't thought of as a. As yeah. A, yeah. Really the out. more, the more I was like, you know, you go into those wildlife classes and whatnot, and the more I like went into it, I'm like, oh, you know, maybe it's uh, it's uh, like soil is like my thing, or like water is like my thing, and it's just kind of like, yeah, that was kind of always my thought. Uh, that might not be the best answer, but uh, yeah, that's good too. I one thing that's clear, you have a passion for it. So I think that's that's always you know it's always good to interview someone in one of these sessions that loves what they do. And I, I think that came out really clear. I just have one more question, uh, and this is maybe, I you know it's just a curiosity. Like you've been in some remote locations and in the wilderness and stuff like that. Any any wildlife encounters while you've been out there that that kind oh, of oh for sure, <laughs> um, yeah, I was. Uh... <laughs> Definitely like big black bear. Uh, I've definitely seen quite a bit of lynx, which is awesome. I don't get to see a lot of those cats, but actually that lynx was like up near Prince Albert, like wasn't even like that far sort of thing. So, but yeah, no black bears for sure. And uh, that, I don't know if you can recall, but that one snowmobile picture I had like in the bottom left corner there was definitely like a pack of wolves like close oh really and that was kind of like a spooky you could hear them <laughs> yeah. so uh, that would be yeah I'd, I'd be looking over my shoulder lots <laughs> no it was it's good though it, it's awesome you could see some cool stuff no i'm just not sure if lucas or stephanie that joined us i don't know uh can i unmute them or can they unmute um if they if they had a question i don't know if they do or not or they could ask in the chat uh, where can the recording of this uh, where can the recording of the webinar be found? It's on the uh, www.rdiec.ca. It's the Regina District Industry Education Council has a YouTube channel. So that's where you can find this recording in the future. So it should be posted there maybe by sometime tomorrow and then it'll stay on there. So the RDIEC website, just if you think of that, Google. Type in those four letters and you'll get to their website. So for Lucas to know that. So anyways, Dawson, I don't have anything else. Uh, I don't know if there's any other questions coming through in the chat. I don't think so. So um, I will uh, thank you once again for this and uh, I will stop the recording. Perfect.